Welcome back, everybody, to more Final Fantasy VI. Someone important to me was jailed by the Empire. I've hated the Empire ever since. I joined the Returners when I realized the Empire was rotten to the core. I wanted to make a difference. But I have no significant other in my life. That's not entirely true. Besides, I'm sure there are people who feel you're important to them. They're counting on you. So welcome back to more Final Fantasy VI. Uh, I'm happy to have you guys. Last time when we came to the Returners hideout, we didn't have a confrontation, but we met with Banyan, the leader of the Returners. And we have Sabin here. The only thing I can add to that is you could trust my, my brother implicitly. He's always been fair with me. You can trust him, Terra. But don't you dare tell him I said that. Aw, oh, Sabin. Ah uh -huh. <clears throat> And so we're gonna go down here. And right now, we're just trying... Terra's trying to figure out if this is something that she wants to do. She wants to know if, if going with the Returners is the right decision, since she is still an amnesiac and doesn't know right from wrong here. It's gonna be tough to talk you into helping us. If we push you too hard, we're no different than the Empire. So we want you to make up your own mind. Which is what you should do. You know, if, if, if you're asking her to join your cause, well, she kind of has to has to come to that decision on her own. So I do like this whole prospect, and in fact, we're going to get to the better moment. Oh, Lord Banyan? He went outside a moment ago. Yes, let me escape. <laughs> and here is Banyan. <coughs> Have you made a decision, girl? Will you become our last ray of hope? You will? Really? Fancy that. <laughs> but I'm scared. The person who possesses this relic need not fear harm. Please, Terra, I'd like you to take it with you. What is this? A lucky charm. Take it. You know, I've told you like three times. So that's uh, a new relic. I have a plan. Please, could you get everyone together? I'm an old man. I don't even know if we actually know his his age, but I'm I always treated him like an like an old sage. Right. We all know that the Empire is using magitech power in battle. The point is, how has the Emperor created it? I had Locke look into the rumor that the Empire is forcing the world's finest scholars to study espers. All the trouble in Narshi is over in Esper, too. Makes sense. So there's connection. You mean there's some connection between Espers and Magitek? I can only recall one thing linking Espers and Magitek power. You don't mean. Indeed. The ancient war of the Magi. No! It can't be! Dun dun dun! My grandma used to tell me stories about magical machines. Could they have been true? Could that ancient tragedy be playing out once again? It's just speculation, after all. But historical studies have provided a number of conflicting and frightening theories. According to one theory, humans and machines were imbued with powers drained from espers. That could explain Magitek power. We can only fight Magitek enemies with Magitek weapons. It's risky, but if we have Terra speak with that esper, it might just wake up. I wonder if that's wise, Ben. 
anyone could say. Regardless, we need Terra's help. Terra. I'll do it. What nonsense! You sound as if you're enjoying this! What? What's that noise? I didn't hear anything. What about you guys? Emergency! Zerbanion! I fell down and I can't get up. South Figaro! Ugh. What's going on? What happened? The Empire took Figaro. Coming this way. They found us. We haven't a moment to lose. Lock. I know. Someone has to sneak into South Figaro and slow the Empire down, right? This is right up your alley. Good luck. Terra, please wait for me. And please. Don't let a lecherous young king who shall remain nameless near you. Lock! Big brother, aren't you ever gonna grow up, you pansy? <laughs> what are we going to do? We'll escape down the, Reet Li the Leet River and make our way to Nashi. I want to see that Esper for myself. Right, there's a raft by the back entrance. It's a gamble, but we're fresh out of options. You're in danger here. Please come with us to Nashi. Probably even gain some understanding of your own abilities. We've no time to dilly jelly or shilly shally. Let's make for Nashi. Ah, cheap FF7 plug. Oh, Drac, you're shameless. Yes, yes, I am. <coughs> All right, so this kind of steps up the next part of the story, which is now that we've met the re with the returners, we actually do need to go back to Narshi and have Terra complete communication with that Esper. And people might have noticed that I transitioned. I actually did do a little, a little bit of level grinding here with the characters that I had uh, available to me. So here's the Leet River. Here we go. This raft will take us to Nashi. Yes, we're going to hop aboard the raft. We Head towards Narshi, but protect Banyan at all costs. So this is actually an added concept here. If Banyan dies, you can't just Phoenix down him back up. If he dies, that's an instant KO for the party. You could be doing perfectly well, and you forget to heal Banyan, uh, and you will lose. So at this point, thankfully, it's a good idea that Banyan has the health ability, which is a basically an AoE heal for all of your party. Um, and... I, I've met people who have not used it at all. And I keep on telling him, look, if you're down 5 HP, you are never going to get access to this character again, so you might as well just use it. <coughs> he is basically your game shark for this part of the part of the story. All right. And so now we actually are making our way up to the Leet River, through the Leet River to Narshi uh, to complete the next task. And unfortunately, we don't have Locke with us. Locke is actually off in South Figaro. He is helping out with the uh, the Empire occupation there. And so we are on our own here. And you actually can make choices to go get chests and whatnot. Uh, to my knowledge, really, the chests don't provide a whole lot of reward in the Leet River. I love it. I'm speaking Leet speak with the Leet River. And so I don't really go after them. I, I just basically move on through... Uh, this segment because we're going to have some better rewards come down the pipe um, with what happens next. So while we're making the, the, our way through, uh, a little bit of business to handle. So I hope everybody's having a good week. Um, 
First of all, with uh, Geek News, I'm actually working on the podcast right now to, or getting it edited so that I can get it up on Podomatic. It is up on YouTube, so you guys can enjoy it there. We had lots to talk about, including uh, the situation with Blizzard and Nostalrius last week. We also had uh, lots to talk about with Warner Brothers and the idea that they were they're considering doing yet another cinematic universe with Hanna Barbera of all people, and so. We had that to discuss. We also had uh, a little gem that was found on the on the Neo Geo. Twenty six years later, we found an uh, a guy found an unknown board, which actually has a unique fighting game uh, on it. And I will let you guys go to the episode to figure out what it was. We also have some NX rumors, so you guys can enjoy all of that, and hopefully soon on Podomatic. I'm hoping to get it up by tonight because I'm actually running a little late anyway. Uh, as far as the live stream goes, today, actually, I'm recording literally like two hours before the live stream. So, yes, it's happening today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Right now, we have... So, I actually, I've got a little bit of business to handle, and it's going to be discussed on the live stream, too. But for those who can't make it uh, for live, I'm going to make a little bit of a change with the live streams. I know, I keep on saying that, but... After doing Smash Brothers, not not to say that I didn't enjoy myself, and I hope you guys did too, uh, but it actually kind of made me come to a realization. Fighting games are pretty quick now. Like, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get in, do a match, and get out. And in the meantime, you know, I'm keeping you guys waiting, and I, I think I handled it well by handling a little bit of uh, Q&A with some spectator mode, but uh, here's what we're going to do from here on in. <clears throat> While some multiplayer games don't really have this problem... Fighting games kind of do, because fights don't really last longer than, I would say, two to five minutes. And so, today, we are still taking on a fighting game. We're taking on Street Fighter V, even though a lot of people think I shouldn't do it because I, I ripped in a new one. I still enjoy the versus people. I'm just pissed off that the story mode isn't coming until uh, until two months from now. So, that that's my problem with it. And no, I'm not going to do the a review of the story mode. They, they had their chance. That was my review, and I'm sticking to it. So, we're going to be playing Street Fighter V today, but also uh, I'm going to adopt kind of a unique, or a, not a unique, a uh, familiar format. If people are fans of Screw Attack and how they've done their, their Screwing Around series, which is basically them live streaming games with you guys, I'm going to be adopting something similar to that, but not outright copying it. So, don't send me the whole copycat or whatever concept. I'm not completely adopting what they do because they do have dedicated shows but occasionally when when they notice that either the panel's getting bored with it or uh maybe even the viewers are getting bored with it they will change it uh they'll change up the games just to keep things fresh so if that happens with multiplayer so like for example today with uh, or if we ever uh, if we ever go back to playing splatoon which i, I can guarantee you we will that was fun um, and now that we can get the, the consoles working, we're definitely going to go back to it. But if we if we continue to have problems like that, then I'm actually going to have a, a, a another... Jeez, oh, cannot stop with the uh, mannerisms here. If we're having problems like that, then I will change up the format. And maybe, like, for an hour, we'll do some Street Fighter. And then for another hour, I will have a game, another game loaded up that has been recommended to me. And we will try that out live. So you guys get a unique experience. Yes, it means that you don't get two hours of Street Fighter V. Sorry, fighting game fans, but, you know, I really do want to keep things available to as many people as possible. And I think that this will, this will work. And so I do have another game, load, uh, another game loaded up, ready to go, just in case Street Fighter V is just not keeping interest, either for me or for you guys. And... I think we'll just keep that with the format, like, because uh, I know people want their recommendations seen, and I also know that people would like multiplayer. So I think this is kind of a good compromise. It, if people are still interested in Street Fighter 2 after an hour, we'll continue to do Street Fighter 5. That, that's the way it'll go. If not, then I'll move over to the next game, and we'll just do that from here on in for live stream. So I hope you guys enjoy that format. Leave me a comment if you don't like how that works, and uh, maybe even... Give me a little bit of a feedback, constructive criticism, and I'll get it fixed. <clears throat> so the live stream is happening. It is Street Fighter V, and um, I'm actually... Do I, do I dare... Well, the live stream will have happened by the time this thing goes up. 
Uh, so I will have Street Fighter V, and if I actually do two hours of Street Fighter V, well, there you go. The process works. Uh, if not, then I actually do have an indie game that just barely came out, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, recommended to me by a viewer called Enter the Gungeon. Uh, which basically, he knew that I was a fan of Diablo and Torchlight and all that stuff. So he actually recommended this one because it's a gun version or a, a gun or a contra version of something like that. So we're going to try it out. So if there's not enough interest for Street Fighter V, we will pick up Enter the Gungeon. And thankfully, that's also on PS4. So there you go. That's that's the live stream schedule. The Let's Plays obviously aren't going to be affected. We will have a podcast this weekend uh, going up live. And I'm really trying hard to get you guys the podcast as quickly as I can. My goal is usually to get it up on Tuesday. But yeah, it's not been working. What? What is it? What is it? Oh, this character. I'm so happy we get to introduce him now. <laughs> Game over. Don't tease the octopus, kids. Everybody, I'd like to introduce you to Ultros. This is a recurring Final Fantasy character, specifically in 6. He, he comes in a couple of times throughout the game. Yowch! Sifu Tsup! And he's just, he's a comedic villain. I, I love him. Um, I love the fact that we came up with it, with this idea. And in fact, uh, if people are interested, if people actually played Final Fantasy XIII 2, he has DLC for it. You can actually, there's a battle arena, you can actually fight him. Delicious morsel! Let me get my bib! Owie. That tentacle hurts. It is plus 22 schoolgirl damage. Yeah, I never get tired of that joke. So, yeah, Ultra... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to repeat all uh, other things that he said, but... Uh, this is Ultros. I, you're going to see him throughout 6. He is fun. I'm kind of sad that, like, there wasn't an Ultros kind of character throughout the rest of the games. There are occasionally some that we'll be able to get. Now, oh, muscle heads! Hate him! So, I love Ultros. I, I love comedic villains when, when you can actually make it work. And some ga some of the games later on do have that. I mean, obviously, Five had Gilgamesh. So that that happened. And I love the fact that they kept that. I'm trying to think, like, Seven, seven does have one. Eight. Let's see, does Eight have... Yeah, Eight has one. Nine. Nine might. I can't remember who it is. That's all, friends! I guess we threshed it. Wow, I've given him a Yugi voice. Don't bet on it. It's probably just hiding from us. Ew! Something stuck to my leg! No! Not that kind of game, Ultros! Teta, over here! It's alright now. We fixed your schoolgirl damage. Nah, I'm not even going further. Watch out. I'm gonna hit it with a blitz. No! Summon! Don't distract me, brother! People are actually recommending that I do the Macho Man voice for him. I might do it. Uh, he's always been a tad zealous. Sobin! Oh, don't worry about him. Are you sure he's okay, Banyan? You should know better than any of us. After all, you're his twin. Even though you guys aren't alike. Any moment, he'll flop right onto the lap, onto the raft. What the? Well, I lost that bet. Hmm, seems a little too perky. <laughs> Sobin! Sobin! 
Take care of yourself, I guess. Even though you might be dead. <coughs> well, he did fly quite a bit. He blasted off again. That's what happened. Sobin! No! We can't save him! Edgar and Terra race towards Narshi while protecting Banyan. And this week on the Clone Wars, but what about Sobin, who was swallowed by the raging waters? And... How is Locke faring after having penetrated the Empire's defenses in South Figaro? You decide! Is all going according to plan? Again, you decide! Choose a scenario, Cooper! So this is actually a unique part of the story where you actually get to go into the various perspectives going on at this point in the story. So you can go and play as Locke in South Figaro and help him with uh, his thwarting the Empire. We don't know what happened with Sabin. He's obviously floating down the Elite River in the wrong direction. Uh, we're assuming, anyway. And so at that point, you can go play him and see what he goes through. Or you can resume as Banyan, Terra, and Edgar on their way to Narshi. And given the... So I'm going to kind of spoil my direction on this one. <coughs> uh, we are going to go with the... You could technically go up and talk to either one of them and start up the scenario. We're going to go with the Banyan, Edgar, and Terra scenario and uh, get them to Narshi. Fleeing the Empire's troops, Banyan, Edgar, and Terra ride the rapids towards Narshi. But the, but the going won't be easy. I like having fun with this. So yeah, we just continue on the Leet River. Um, one of the reasons that I'm also doing this is that technically... This scenario is actually the shortest of the two, or of the three. So we're going to get it done. And obviously, we're we're more than capable of, of getting all these all of these party members to Narshi. So we're going to go ahead and take care of them first. This is one of the many things that I do love about Six. Is like they, they try to experiment with having an actual battlefield and having enemies that you would, you would have to do battles with. You also have this moment where we actually have the party divided. And I'm trying to think, do, we haven't had too many occurrences in the past games where they actually do split the party up. Um, occasionally you'll lose a party member and maybe you'll, you'll get a new leader for the time being, but... This is, this is the unique game where they actually tried to split the party up and have expanded dungeons and things like that where you have a split party. And I love the prospect of it. Um, I wish they would have done more with it. But, unfortunately, after 6, it never really happened again. It's a lost opportunity as far as I'm concerned. But then again, after 6, like, 6 has one of the bigger parties that you can get in a Final Fantasy game. After that, the, the parties got significantly less. Actually, no. I would actually probably say after about 7, they, they started lessening the party size so that you could have you know, your desired party, but only a few stragglers. So maybe that's why. They, they just didn't have the numbers on their side uh, to do that. Which is a crying shame. That's such a great idea. And other RPGs at this time did it. Uh, Sui Koden, for example. Sui Koden, uh... I can't even believe I'm bringing up that game series, because I'm like, I'm 50-50 with it. But, I mean, you actually could recruit not only party members that would fight for you in that, but you also could recruit merchants, strategists, and a bunch of other kinds of characters to lead up to, I think it was 108, no, 109 Stars of Destiny, and be able to have this full-on army. And they would actually have army battles. So it just feels to me like a kind of a wasted opportunity to not do this in Final Fantasy. I think it would be a, a great idea. And no, they... I don't even think... Thir yeah, 13 didn't do it. I don't know if 15 will. When Locke first helped me, he fiddled with something right around here. Oh, did he now? Uh, knowing him, there's probably some secret switch in this rock wall. Uh, yeah. And he told Terra to remember. There you go. So now we can go into Narshi through the back door. <coughs> Go get him, fellas! 
I don't know. Uh, so we actually, I actually have gotten recommended to play Suicoden. I don't know if I'm going to be able to justify that for Dragon Shadow, but maybe we can take it on for for my channel after we get through Final Fantasy. And I do have some other RPGs lined up that I would like to do. But we obviously need to get through this legacy. And actually, looking at the time, I think that after this battle is going to go ahead and do it for this week. So, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. When we get back next week, we will continue on through the Caves of Narshi to get Terra, Banyan, and Edgar uh, to... Uh, I can't remember. I think it was Arvis in Narshi. And after that, whom will we take on next? Will we go with Locke or will we go with Sabin?